Amidst the worsening cases of insecurity in Nigeria, governors from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, have called on the federal government to decentralize the police and facilitate the establishment of state police to give states helmsmen the legal backing to combat the menace. Well, joining us are local government chairman for Equiri local government area in River State, Samuel Wanosike, and security expert, Ife Wanago. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having us. All right. Uh, I'm going to start with you, um, Samuel, because this is a, a matter that is brought up by the PDP. Um, the first things first, the reason why these governors are calling for... Um, you know, state policing is because of what's been happening across the country in terms of insecurity and the likes. But what are your thoughts on the idea of state police? I mean, this is not the first time that it's people have called for state policing. We've been hearing it from um, 2013 all the way down. Um, is this really a good idea per se? Because there are disadvantages that people have brought up um, as a case for, not, for us not to have state police. Yeah, first of all, it's very funny for us to say we are doing democracy and we are learning from the Americans, and yet we do not want to learn properly. We want to learn halfway. In America, the democracy we envy and we emulate from, they have state policy. Even university colleges, business premises have their own internal security that they call the internal police. So <laughs> the issue is that state policing is long overdue whether no matter whatever statement or sentiment anybody want to raise for us to solve the security of this nation and return our soldiers back to do that which they are born to do to protect our territory and to protect the outside invasion for soldiers to stop doing internal security what they call is we must go back to state policy we're yeah. saying that we have on on uh, unemployment tax category and we have able-bodied young men roaming the streets and turning to criminals, turning to kidnappers, when we can turn them to state police. My sister, we should stop deceiving ourselves in this country. Interesting. The People's Democratic Party have made a call. That call is very important. And for us to succeed in this nation, there is no other way to go. It is state policing. We must be able to allow all the three tiers of government have their own policy system. The local governments will have their own policy system. The states will have their own policing system for us for us to be able to check this insecurity that is bedeviling us. Let's so, let's talking about that. Uh, we know that um, in the north there's Ispa, um, and and we also have a Motekun in the southwest. And of course, River State does have its own um, form of. Um, community policing. Now, the People's Democratic Party is also making a case that the federal government is somewhat pr suppressing the idea of um, state policing with the idea of community policing, and that um, community policing cannot take the place of um, state police. Um, but let's look at what the community police has done so far? How well have they done? Uh, can we really say that we're ready for state policing? Uh, with states who have had these, you know, other forms of uh, security agencies, have they been able to have a handle on them? Have they been able to make sure that they do their work without it being politicized or used as guard dogs for the governments in power? Let me just give you an instance of what's happening in River States. We had the situation where court activities became a bane to our existence. Court activities took over our day-to-day -day existence. And as a people, we remember that our founding fathers, our forefathers, had what they call community vigilante. And because the federal government refused the river state government to have a police structure that can help in providing information and logistics to the proper police that they control, Remember the issue of going to Norwa camp and shutting down the training of the police system the River State government was trying to put, even when the Lagos State government was allowed to do that. But that of River State was shut down because of political reasons. We said no problem. But we had to come back to the issue of local vigilante. Guess what? The local vigilante that you know as popularly called OSPAC was able to assist the regular police and the military, gather information and logistics to solve the problem of insecurity that was created by this courtist. 
Today, as we talk, has it really been solved? Has, been ha has the issue of cultism been really solved in River State? In reality, yes, we have solved it eighty percent. We solved it. You can you, you, can't, you can't hear about kidnapping of buses anymore in River State. You can you can hear that our farms are our farmlands are now open for our farmers to go and do their cultivation. We've taken about our we've taken, taken back our society. That's what we're talking about. So imagine a situation where it is now allowed by constitution for states to have police that the governor can fund and the governor can stand and sit with the police executive and plot operations and achieve results. My sister, it is not a matter of gain saying. We have nothing to speak about this matter and to allow state policing and local government policing come to bear so that we can be able to stop this pressure we are putting on Nigerian army, Nigerian air force, and Nigerian navy. They are overstretched. Let's you talk, can imagine let, a military let, man let, who has done two years or three years in, in Medugri will come back rather to rest. He's allowed to run around the creek again. They are human beings. They're not machines. So, but let, let's break it down. The guys, I mean, if we're talking about state policing now, it means that you are going to still have a redeployment of sorts of these police officers or, um, you know, to the states where they all come from. And that means that maybe we also still have to re you know, employ more people into the police force. How many states will be able to, um, you know, shoulder that responsibility? I mean, look at what we're, the states are facing in terms of the minimum wage. Certain states have still been un, uh, unable to pay the percentage for the new percentage for the minimum wage. Are states capable to shoulder? Uh, you know, the, 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 the wages of these new sets of police officers, uh, depending any on how state, many of them are going to be states, any states to the states. That will not take security as the foundation of each governor that state has failed. For you to talk about development, you must know that there must be a security and safety of the environment for development to happen. So if you're telling me that the state is saying they cannot pay salary, then what would be the essence of the state paying the civil servants if the state is ungovernable? First of all, the right thing has to be done. Let's not deceive ourselves. Even you as a reporter, if that environment where your station is, you have a crisis, this reporting will not be happening. You won't even come to work. So first thing first, for us to get Nigeria working again, we must get the security architecture of this nation right. When we get it right, we cannot be done. Even if it means that workers don't get salary, for security men to get salary, let it happen so. But you see, that's for us to be able to know that we are moving forward as a nation. But that's the interesting part. Nobody would want to part with their monies, even though you know everybody wants to be safe and secure. That is supposed to solely be government's responsibility. If government is giving us security, it shouldn't be at uh, you know the expense of me getting my take-home pay. No, you will have no need. Hold on, man. You will have no need to take a uh, ta get a take-home pay when you don't have a place to spend the take-home pay. If they kidnap you today, for God forbid, you're kidnapped today and you die in the hand of kidnappers, where will you spend your take-home pay? We are telling you that these kidnappers are blocking you. They're even coming close to your houses. And you're, keep, you're telling me about take-home. What, what are we taking home for? Let's get the security architecture of this nation right first. We know we have a nation. Then we cannot talk about payment of other issues. It is, it is a practical Why would we deceive ourselves? Now, the politics aspect of it is where... Um, Many people have opposed the issue of state policing, uh, talking about governments using them, um, you know, as their guard dogs or doing the beatings of, you know, the government in power. Let's not even forget, as we speak right now, politicians have police officers deployed to or attached to them, even though every time a new IG comes in, he says, oh, uh, we're, we're making sure that we take away all these police aides from um, politicians, but they are there and they do, they seemingly do the bidding of these politicians. I, I, I remember um, the issue between the former state governor of River State and the sitting governor where two of their police aides, you know, had a face off. How do we make sure that, you know, the same policing structure that we have, even though it's not so great, but the, the, peop the police officers will be responsible to the citizens and not necessarily responsible to the governors. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Is the federal government not using the so-called so federal police? Are they not using it? 
That's not our problem. Our problem is that... So is that why the states that, 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 are asking for police ask officers so that they can also do the same thing the federal government is no, doing? No, it's not possible. That's not true. It's the story those who do not want us to move forward as a nation is raising for us to do the right thing. They know the truth. Now, let me tell you. When we had the regional government, we had the state police. We have regional police. And they say, well, it checks and balance in everything you do in life. That's why the National Assembly needs to enact a law to be able to manage this state policy. Because whether you like it or the, the military, are you, not, are you not aware that the military invaded Rivers State during the election? Did you, say, did you make Rivers people to police and say, we don't want one military again in Rivers State? We cannot exist as Rivers people without the military. Even if the military invaded the election, it doesn't mean that the military should be asked to leave. No. The point is that who is the military officer that invaded the election? You call him out and let him face his responsibility for breaching the law. So the point is that if you have a state police and a governor wants to use it against the people, the governor will be there as governor forever. The immunity won't you spare. People will document the crimes and criminality that he has committed using the state police. At the point, he will face the law. That is not a situation anybody should talk about. No, it's not. The truth of the matter is that even you, as a reporter, is asking me this question. Let each other hear it clearly. We are sitting on the keg of a gunpowder. It's either we solve this problem and this nation will explode. And when this nation explodes, you have no place to sit down and do this reporting you're doing. Interesting. But everybody seems to say, think that, you know, state policing is going to solve all the problems that we're facing today. But really, is it the bait of our solution? Because let's not forget, like you said, uh, I, I was speaking to a guest and he talked about the fact that the creeks uh, in River State are facing its fair share of piracy. Um, and you also said within the city you have cultism. But is it really police, state policing that will solve that problem? Or is it a political will to get make sure that our country in its entirety is properly secured and our borders are also safe? Let me tell you, in answering that question, state policing is the solution to this problem. Because in state police, we have marine police, we have border guards, we have every police has its sections. This EFCC we are talking about, they are still police. They are crime uh, police involved investigation. We have, you, when I was growing up as a young man, I used to realize that the CIDs, you don't know them. They come and relate with people. They are police, but they are plain clothes policemen. The point is that the federal government is carrying too much. They cannot manage it. They cannot take care of it. We need to decentralize these factions and let the states come in and spend. You see, madam, if we don't have state policing, the governors will still sit down and watch you and still be answering logistics officers. And this station will be going down and down and down to a point where we will become Central African Republic, God forbid, or we'll become Yemen, God forbid. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Samuel Wanosike. Unfortunately, we lost Ife Wanogo uh, in the process of this conversation. But thank you. Samuel Wanosike is the local government chairman of Equiri Local Government in River State. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you for having me. Should All I right. stay on the line? Yes. Uh, thank you very much for coming. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. It's time for my take. Now, from Chibok to Dabchi to Kankara and now Kagara, when will these abductions end, one would ask? They seem to all be playing a similar script, so why are we not steps ahead of them? What have we done in all the, with all the intel in relation to these reoccurrences? Because it's not been one or two, four of them. Shouldn't we have learned from the past? I mean, too many questions have been begging to be answered. These people that we call bandits or kidnappers have been terrorizing us for years and years, yet we give them the fancy names instead of calling them what they are. We always wait in this country to react. Now we have new service chiefs. They came on and talked tough, but today people have been taken without a trace. Our leaders seem to have failed us. Our security situation is a total mess. Nigerians no longer feel safe. Those who swore to protect us seem to be overwhelmed and bereft of ideas on how to keep us safe. Where do we go from here? Who do we call to? Because it seems like our leaders are deaf to our cries, as it says right now. It's, it's time for us to step up. 
to clean up this security mess and send a hard message to all these perpetrators of violence and terror before it gets out of hand. So, Mr. President, the ball is now in your court. Time to do your job. I am Mariana Combe, thanking you for watching. It's been Plus Politics.